LOL. So that mean I can go back to school again? You are locked on fantasy basketball. Your daily podcast on fantasy basketball. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball. Today in uh, today's show, we're going to be looking at uh, the Dynasty rookie drafts that took place across all six of the Red Rock Dynasty leagues that were in existence. Again, we have started seven new ones this year, so when we do this next year, we're going to have a 13-league sample for Dynasty rookie ADPs. What we're looking at is the rookie-only drafts that occurred in these Dynasty leagues and what pick these players went at, uh, what, whether I thought they were necessarily good or bad, and how or how it disagreed with my Dynasty rookie ranking. So, Michael Bolton... Let's get to it. To it. Really, really good idea. But before we start going through the ADPs, I'll just give you an idea of the picks that that I had in these uh, in these drafts across all six of these leagues. I had eleven picks. Um, five uh, five of the leagues are thirty team leagues, and another one is a sixteen team league with a three round rookie draft. Um, so yeah, my uh, my picks uh, across all these leagues. The highest pick I had was pick number three, and I selected DeAndre Ayton with that pick after Luka Doncic and Jaron Jackson Jr. went off the board. Uh, the next highest pick I had was pick nine, and I went with McCall Bridges at that spot. At seven, I had a pick at seventeen. I picked DeAnthony Melton there. I had a pick at eighteen and picked Ali Akobo at that spot. At pick twenty-one, I had Mo Wagner, but that was uh, that was my fault. I didn't mean to pick Wagner. He he. I had a Q set. It happened overnight. But what I mistakenly did in the fan track software, everyone makes uh, mistakes. I had the box tick that said fill active slots first. So on my active roster, the only spot I had available was power forward. I had about four or five guards listed ahead of Wagner on my queue. But because my active spot, the only one available was power forward, the fan track system went through my uh, queue and picked someone to fill that power forward spot. So uh, I ended up with Wagner at 21. But what I ended up doing is I made a trade with someone in that league. I traded uh, back and got pick 27 in that in that round uh, and sent them Wagner. And I selected Josh Koji. Uh, so Akogi with that pick at pick 27, which is someone who I would have picked at pick 21 anyway. So in, in essence, I picked Akogi at uh, at 21, but I actually got him at 27 as I traded back in just a sw- straight swap to get a player that I actually preferred there. I picked 23 in another league, and I picked Troy Brown of the Washington Wizards. Then I had a couple of pick 39s, Kyrie Thomas in one league and Kata Bates-Diop in another. I had pick 47 where I got Devontae Graham. 53 where I chose Jalen Adams and 54 where I got Yusuf Sanon. They were the uh, they were the extent of my picks. Actually, one of the rookie drafts is still going, and I think it's up to about pick 48, and that's uh, 47, and my picks pick 48. Um, and I've got a couple of guys there in my queue, and I will uh, I'll update you when we get to that last pick. But they're the selections that I made across those six dynasty rookie drafts that I uh, that I participated in across the last week. Let's talk about them now. Let's go through the ADPs of all these players that were selected. It, there was no doubt. There was a con, there was absolute consensus as to who the number one guy was across these drafts. Now, I think a large part of that is that the people in these drafts listen to this podcast and they do take my rankings on board. They don't follow them strictly, and I wouldn't want them to follow them strictly. I want everyone to have their own input and opinion. And, and when I put out rankings and lists and projections, and when you go, oh, Josh says this, it must be right. It's like, Josh says this, let's take that into consideration. Let's hear the reasons behind all these things and make that decision. Luka Doncic went at number one in all six of those drafts, and Jaron Jackson Jr. went at number two in all six of those drafts. So they had an ADP of one and two, respectively. That's exactly the way I had them ranked. It's the way I had them ranked pre-draft. It's the way I had them ranked post-draft. It's the way I had them ranked post-summer league. Nothing changes for me there, and that's the way I have them. Now, for this coming first season, that's not the way that I'll have these rookies ranked when we're talking about their production for this season alone. I don't think that's necessarily the way that it will go down. I think that Aiton moves ahead of those guys just for this coming season. But when we're talking dynasty and long-term value, that's the order that I have those guys in for this uh, for those drafts, and that's the way that that draft played out. The next two guys on the list, DeAndre Aiton and Wendell Carter, they were... They were Flip-flopping between picks three and four. No other player went at pick three or four apart from Aiton and Carter. 
Aiton had the slightly higher ADP at 3.3, while Wendell Carter was 3.7. As I said, I had pick three in one league, and I was tossing up as to which guy I would take. I ended up with Aiton, but if I had have had pick three in two different leagues, I would have gone Aiton in one and Carter in the other. So across the six leagues, we had Aiton go at pick three in four of them, and Carter go at pick three in two of them, and then they switched around and had pick four in that other one. The fifth highest guy in terms of ADP was Trey Young, who had an ADP of 5.3. And much like the 3-4 combination, there was only two guys who were selected at pick five and six across all six leagues. It was Trey Young, who was there in four of them, and Muhammad Bamba, One, two, three, four, five. who was selected at, uh, at pick six in those other ones. So when I bring up this next slide, you'll see Bamba with an ADP of 5.7. So the top six was was consensus across all six leagues. It was Doncic, Jackson, Aiton, Carter, Young, and Bumba, with uh, switching between Aiton and Carter and between Bumba and Young. After that, things started to get a, a little bit, not necessarily wild, but some, uh, some interesting picks started going down. The guy who had the next highest ADP at 7.7 .7 was Shea Gilgis Alexander. He went at seven in, uh, in three of the six drafts, and the lowest spot he went was pick nine. So... People were obviously really turned on by the Kentucky factor, by the Summer League factor. I bumped him up to number eight in my uh, in my rankings uh, post-Summer League, so I'm on board with that selection uh, there. Um, as you'll see, you'll, Marvin Bagley has fallen below where I had him in the ranks due to his poor Summer League, and, and I don't blame that at, at all to see Bagley fall down to that level. In fact, Bagley was the next guy. He was slightly behind Shea in terms of his ADP, he had an ADP of eight. The highest Bagley went in any draft was seven, and the lowest he went was nine as well. Two at seven, two at eight, and two at nine for an ADP of eight. I actually had him at six in my post-summer league rookie dynasty ranks, so some people might make a decision. They got a little bit of a steal there, but I could easily see him going down to eight or nine um, in many in, in many different leagues. And that league where I took uh, McCall Bridges at, uh, at pick nine, um, yeah, Bagley had gone one spot ahead of me and I was debating, you know, if Bagley actually slides here, what, what do I do? But I would have taken him at nine, but uh, me taking Bridges at nine actually was the highest that he went in any draft. The next guy in this list of ADP players is the fort, Kevin Knox. He had an ADP of 9.8. The highest he went was at number eight and he actually went at, uh, at number 14 in the original Red Rock Dynasty League. So a, a much larger uh, range of outcomes for the Fort Kevin Knox. I've spoken about him before. His summer league was impressive because he dunked a lot and he scored points. He was still inefficient, doesn't get assists, doesn't get steals, doesn't get blocks, and the efficiency is a problem. But he's going to have opportunity this season. He'll probably be, a, be ahead of Shea and Bumba and Bagley uh, for this season, maybe even ahead of Carter, who, who knows, or Jaron Jackson Jr. just for this season. But I do have... You know, concerns about his long-term future. Um, Jacob Goldstein, who was on this podcast a couple of weeks ago, his PIPM projection system never projects Kevin Knox to be a positive player, which is a little bit concerning. But I don't mind him at there. At that ADP of 9.8, I had him uh, at number 14 in terms of my dynasty ranking, so a little bit higher, and pe people are obviously a bit higher on him than what I am. The next one I think will surprise people, Mitchell Robinson, uh, current or current uh, Knox's uh, Knicks teammate. He had an ADP of 11.3, so the 10th highest um, tenth highest ranked uh, ranked player uh, there. That's a, that's a pretty, uh, pretty interesting number for Robinson. He actually went at pick seven in one league, um, the lowest he went was pick 14. So for a guy that was picked in the 30s in the real NBA draft, you're going to have to get on him pretty early if these results are anything to go by. I had him 12th in my dynasty rankings. So him coming in at 11.3 is bang on where I expected. Seventh was quite high, and that was in the original Red Rock Dynasty League. That was ahead of Shea and ahead of Marvin Bagley as well. But no problem with taking Mitchell Robinson there if you believe in him, and especially... With the news today that the Knicks aren't going to be including Joachim Noah in their plans for this season. They're looking to stretch and waive him in some time in September or trade him, but he's not going to be in the rotation. So we're talking about the Luke Cornett or Isaiah Hicks, who are the guys who are battling for Mitchell Robinson for those backup center minutes currently. So he's got a real chance to step in right away and be a rotation guy and could look at being a starting center as early as next season. So it's a pretty strong uh, spot there for Mitchell Robinson to be in. Next, we'll look at the next group of five guys. Colin Sexton came in just behind Mitchell Robinson with an ADP of 11.5. I'm not as high on Sexton. I had him 13th in my ranking, so not far off there. 
His highest spot was pick 10 in the Red Rock 30 team Steph Curry League. The lowest he was was 13th in the Bernard King division, but right between that 10 and 13 range. So pretty consistent. I do have my concerns with a guy who, who can't shoot, doesn't get steals, doesn't get high assists or rebounds or hit threes, having a huge ceiling. And much like the Fort, he doesn't, doesn't project to be a positive PIPM player at any point in his career. But he is going to have an ability at some point in the next couple of years to be a... Uh, a bludgeon by volume sort of a player. I'm just not sure that everything else comes together with Colin Sexton, but you know, I could very easily be wrong, and I will be wrong on some of these players, no doubt about that. McCall Bridges uh, next at, at ADP of 12.2, marginally ahead of Mike Porter Jr. at 12.3. Again, I'll be pretty stunned if, if Porter plays uh, over 40 games this season. There's a chance he doesn't play any, and I still don't know how he's going to fit in the NBA. Again, a player who may have limited defensive stats, doesn't pass the ball, and efficiency could be a problem. But at this spot for Porter, I think it's absolutely a fair a fair look. I had McCall as my ninth-ranked player. I had Porter as my 11th-ranked guy. So both of them here with ADPs in, in the 12s. There's a little bit of value there, I believe. Zaire Smith, DRC, he comes in at 14.8 ADP. I obviously had him much higher than this. I think he's got potential top 25 upside, probably low percentage outcome of that happening, but I think he can get there. The broken foot news, the Jones fracture news for DRC that came out, Obviously, um, is not going to make a great season, but these rookie drafts were all completed before that news came out. So the fact that he was down at 15 is pre-injury. I don't think we should be too worried about that injury tanking his long-term value or anything along those lines. But as I said a couple of days ago in the show, if you're looking at yeah, acquiring him in a dynasty league, if someone's shitting themselves about this foot injury, putting him a year behind in, or half a year behind in terms of preparation and an improvement, you should be looking at acquiring him based on this news. <clears throat> Miles Bridges, I had him as the 15th ranked player. His ADP comes in at 15th. Not really too much to say about Bridges there at 15. It, uh, it makes complete sense to have him in that spot. Let's have a look what the highest was that Bridges came in at. He went at 11 in, in one league and he went at 18 in another. So we're starting to see the range of picks uh, spread out quite a bit more now as we get down this draft a, a little bit further on. The next group of guys, De'Anthony Melton, another second-round guy. So two second-round guys in the top 16 players here. He had an ADP of 16.5. I had him ranked as the 16th player. I got him in one draft, as you heard. The highest he went was 15th. The lowest he went was 19th. So yeah, pretty much a, well, not pretty much, absolutely a top 20 player in their eyes. There was rumors coming out that the uh, Houston Rockets and the Atlanta Hawks were in discussions for a Kent Bazemore, Ryan Anderson swap, and the Hawks were looking to get Melton which would be interesting as a backup there to Trey Young at some point. But I do believe that Melton can become an NBA starter and he's a clear top 20 player in this uh, in this class. Lonnie Walker, the fourth, the next guy, ADP of 17. His range varied a lot from 12th in the Steph Curry division to 23rd in the Reggie Evans division. So big, uh, big change there. I think it's going to be hard for him to get significant minutes this year. DeMar DeRozan, Marco Bellinelli, Pat Mills are all there. Bryn Forbes was brought back, and they all play the same position as Walker. I think he's going to struggle for his overall fantasy value just because of his lack of rebounds, assists, uh, steals to a degree as well, and efficiency can be a problem. I had him as 23rd, so I think this is a probably a little bit high on Walker. I'm nowhere near as interested in him as what some others are. Alia Kobo comes in with an ADP of 17.8, another second-round player. People might be thinking that's high for a Kobo, but I think he's got starting point guard potential. Whether that's this season with only Brandon Knight and Shaq Harrison in the mix for Phoenix, or the next season, I'm not sure, but he's efficient, he hits threes, he gets steals, he gets assists, and he can score, and I think he'll be a very, very interesting player, but it is going to be more of a long-term investment. I got him at 18 in one draft, and I was pretty happy to do that, right on that ADP mark. The next one, Kevin Huerta, comes in at 21, a little bit higher than his NBA draft slot at 19. I had Huerta at 25, but when I mentioned the uh, Dynasty re-ranks, I probably would have him a little bit higher. I think there's a chance that he starts this season and plays significant minutes at the end of the year. And he is a guy who can get assists from that wing position. So that's going to be interesting to see whether that develops for Huerta. Efficiency should be a, a, a strong factor for him. Hitting threes could be a 20-point per game scorer at some point. And I think he does have top 100 upside um, during, uh, during his NBA career. His range varied from 19 to 23, so fairly tight on the uh, on the overall draft range. 
Josh Okogie, who I said I, I did get at 27 in one league, he had an ADP at 21.7. Um, I think he's got top 90, top 80 potential. I had him at 20 on my draft ranks. He's just not going to play that much this season unless some sort of catastrophes hit either the Wolves or Tom Thibodeau. And uh, he's in the rotation, but his ability to block shots, get steals, you know, be a, a scoring threat, and I think can work on his efficiency and improve that as well, puts him in a pretty nice spot there at uh, ADP of 21.7. Let's go through the rest of, or the next list of these guys. Troy Brown at 22 and Janan Musa at 22. Oh, sorry, 22.2 for both those guys. So, yeah, pretty equal in terms of their overall uh, ADP. I think that Musa, yeah, based on a lot of his advanced numbers, could have a, a real, real breakout at some point in the next few years and be a, an upper echelon fantasy guy. There's also a significant risk that he never gets anywhere close to that. Whereas Troy Brown, I feel like, will be a solid guy, but never having that high level upside. So I think that it's both fair there, whether you want a solid contribution in a couple of years from Brown or that real swing for the fences. Maybe he's a 18-point scorer with two and a half threes and seven rebounds. Yeah, Musa could potentially get to that on this Brooklyn Nets team. Flaming Mo Wagner. I had Wagner 27th in the rankings. He had an ADP of 22.8. Lakers slash Summer League factor bounced that up. I bounced him up significantly in my last re-rank. I still don't think he's going to be a great NBA center, but he can score. The defensive stuff's going to be a worry, and that's always going to limit his uh, overall ceiling, I believe. Well, Grayson Allen, a clear summer league effect here. He went had an ADP of 23.3. He jumped up in my rankings to uh, to 24th as well, and, and that was reflected in those, uh, in those draft spots. Grayson went... Highest he went was 20, and the lowest he went was 28th. So a decent enough range there for Grayson Allen through those uh, through those uh, ranks. The next one, Aaron Holiday, 24 and a half. Now, he is one that I did not have at, at high, so people definitely uh, varied from my ranks. I had him 37th. I, I'm just not sure that he's ever going to be able to be a starting caliber player. His rankings went from 19th all the way to 30th. I think that 19 pick was obviously a little bit too high. Most of his were in the mid 20 range, but an ADP of 24.5. I'm not totally, I'm not on board of that. I would, I obviously didn't draft him. I let him slide it in most situations. I think that's probably just a little bit too high for as holiday. The next group of guys, the Rock DJ. <laughs> Robbie Williams at 24.7. Um, I had him much higher than this before Summer League and before all this stuff of him just being a complete knob uh, really came out. You know, for losing wallets, forgetting, missing flights, forgetting phone calls, all this stuff that yeah, did really you know, come to fruition in him sliding in the actual NBA draft. Uh, it continues to happen, and, and that's a concern. But he's got talent. He's got top 15 upside, and he was a top 20 guy in two of the drafts that, that he went in. Poor free throw percentage is a concern, and interestingly, the highest he went was in the Red Rock 30 team Roto League, where he's probably less valuable in a Roto League. Um, yeah, he, his range was from uh, from 19 all the way up to 27, so a decent enough range on uh, the Rock DJ. Anthony Simons comes in next, Portland Trailblazers, an ADP of 28.7. I think that's probably right, right about the right spot. For Simons, I had him 28th, probably not going to contribute too much this season, but looked pretty solid in summer league, strong defensively already, and the shot was all right. Chandler Hutchinson at 29.6, um, not not a guy that I'm massively uh, massively in on. Uh, he went 34th as the lowest in one of them, 26th in another, but he's, he can handle the ball, he can get steals, but will the shot ever come around to a level that enables him to get starter level minutes? The Bulls have just signed Jabari Parker, which takes away the potential for him to be a starter there this season. Denzel Lehammer Valentine is still around in Chicago as well. So uh, it's fine around that spot. I'm just not massively into it. The next two guys are players who I'm definitely not high on. Jerome Robinson at 30.7 and Dante DiVincenzo at 30.8. Um, DiVincenzo had a pretty wild uh, split in terms of his value. He went at 24th in one league, 43rd in another uh, Robinson also uh, between 25 and 36 in terms of his draft spot. I had those guys not very high at all. I had Robinson 39th and I had DiVincenzo uh, significantly lower at 46. So people, good. Yeah, I'm glad that people are going against what I what I uh, said. Go with your own thoughts on all this sort of stuff. Um, yeah, so obviously I'm not on board with those ADPs there, but yeah, you're at pick 30, take a flyer. If you believe in a guy, then we'll see if it, if it comes to fruition. But I don't think that either of these guys are going to be making any sort of impact for this coming season, at least. 
Start running through uh, the rest of this uh, rest of this list now. Brucey e. Brown, the Shark, at 31.7. Isaac Bonga at 32.7. I think Bonga's going to be almost invisible this season, but we're talking about two, three years down the track. I think he does have some top 100 upside. Javon Carter at 32.7 as well. Kata Bates-Diop at 33.4. And the Wizard, Omari Spellman at 33.5. And actually, Spellman had the largest range or the largest standard deviation in terms of draft spot uh, amongst all of these guys. He um, he was picked 22nd in one draft, 29th in another, and 41 and 43 in two others. Just wild variations in talent. I don't think that Spellman really fits well in the modern NBA. I think his defensive stuff is a liability. He could very well surprise me. He'd be one of those guys that I wouldn't be shocked if I'm wrong on. So someone like uh, Jerome Robinson or Dante DiVincenzo, I'm not... I'd be I'd be way more shocked if those guys uh, surpass what I expect. But Spellman, I wouldn't be completely shocked if he was able to do more than I expect him to. Kyrie Thomas comes in at 35.8. He was a guy I grabbed at 39 in one draft. I like what he can do, defending multiple positions, get steals, can pass, can shoot. Strong player there. While Svi Mikhailuk of the Los Angeles Lakers had an ADP of 36.5. Again, Lakers factor, summer league factor, shot the ball well, but what else can he do? That's that's the worry we have with Svee. Jared Vander- Vanderbilt, love this pick here. An ADP of 37.6 for Vanderbilt. Of course, we didn't see him in summer league. He had an extraordinarily high rebound rate at Kentucky, but the shot just didn't fall. But so much more that he can do. And if the shot comes, then we're talking top 60, top 70 type potential upside. I don't think it will ever come, but if it does then that's a really nice pick there. Rowdy Rodion's Kurix at 39.4. Uh, advanced stats really do like him as well, even in limited minutes at Barcelona B last season, while Jalen the Burner Bronson at 40.4. Struggled a lot in summer league. Obviously got some players ahead of him, and I think back up at best, but that's what we're talking about when we're talking about the 40th pick in a rookie dynasty draft. Gaz Trent Jr., 40.8 is the next guy. Melvin Frazier, 41.6. Jacob Evans, 41.6 uh, as well. Sorry, Melvin Fraser, 41.3, and Jacob Evans, 41.6, and MC Hamadou Diallo Stop. Time. at 43. Now, Diallo is a guy that obviously struggled a lot at Kentucky, but we're giving the benefit of the doubt. There's a position open there in Oklahoma City for him to push into, so I don't mind that pick. I think it's a, a very, very uh, useful selection. Landry Shamet at 43.6, and Devontae Graham at 47. I'm, I'm much bigger on, uh, on Graham there. I thought he looked okay at Summer League. I, I've selected him in one draft as well. Uh, Tony Parker around as the backup point guard is going to limit what he does this season, but I don't think that Parker is really that good anymore, and Graham has an opportunity to overtake him as early as next season. Chimizi Metu at 47.6. Minutes are going to be tough for him to come by. Justin Jackson of Orlando at 49. I don't think... He's not even signed. He's not on and Orlando's two-way spots at all fill up. I'm not sure he's actually going to play in the NBA at all uh, anytime soon. Costas Antetokounmpo. On a two-way deal with the Mavericks, he was at 49.3. I think the Antetokounmpo name gave him somewhat of a of a bump there. Not not a huge one, but but something of a uh, of a leap forward. I had him at 53 as opposed to 49 here. And Yusuf Sanon at 50. He won't be playing in the NBA this season, but I think he can develop into a solid enough backup point guard that uh, you know I'm I'm okay with him at, at pick 50 there. Let's uh, go through the, the last group of guys here. Devon Hall at 50. Kevin Hervey at 51.5. Two guys from the Thunder. Interestingly, a couple of undrafted players here now. Duncan Robinson of the Miami Heat on a two-way at 52.3. And Jalen Adams, the two-way guy from the Atlanta Hawks at 52.5. You heard me talk earlier about how I did select Jalen Adams. I think he's in for an opportunity this season on the tanking Hawks. Shake Milton, 52.8. Vince Edwards of the Rockets at 53. And Alonzo Trier. Another two-way guy, 53, and Raleigh Alkins at 53.5. Another two-way guy of the Bulls. So in this list here, you see a ton of undrafted guys. Trayvon Blewett, 54.3. Trayvon Duval, 55.4, uh, 55.5, who are at the um, Pelicans and the Bucks, respectively, on two-way deals. So a lot of undrafted guys there in that list, ahead of some players who were drafted. And to round it out, Elise Johnson at 56, Kenrick Williams at 58, Thomas Welsh at 58 uh, with the Nuggets on a two-way, Bill Preston, 58 and a half, the golf ball, Ray Spalding, 58 and a half, Alnoldis Kuboka at 59, who won't be in the NBA this season, and wrapping it up with Tone Carr at 59 of the New Orleans Pelicans, who again, much like Justin Jackson of the Magic, I don't think Tone Carr is going to be on an NBA roster this season, and I don't think he's going to be a two-way guy for the Pelicans either. 
That wraps it up for the Rookie Draft ADP stuff across the Red Rock Dynasty Leagues. Hope that gives you some information if you've got some Dynasty Leagues coming up, some Rookie Drafts coming up. Make sure you're subscribing, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, TuneIn, Stitcher, Spotify, and on YouTube. Follow the Locked On Podcast Network on Twitter at Locked On NBA Net and me at Red Rock underscore Beeble. And on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Guys, we are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. Cameron Oliver.